I was studying theology and part of that is studying comparative religion and I had a particular interest in Islam and so a group of us as students were praying for that part of the world and we thought maybe we should go, maybe God's calling us to go. And initially we were thinking about going to intercede, to pray for God's mercy for that part of the world. One of the distinctives of the Taliban was that women were no longer going to be allowed to be educated and that we just thought was utterly heartbreaking. Before our flight, um, we're staying in a flat in London and I have a dream. And in the dream I see the three of us with Taliban leaders giving them Bibles. So wake up on the morning of our flight and share this encouraging dream with the other two. And they're like, we think that's God. So we went and got about 30, 40 New Testaments and four full copies of the Bible and just filled our rucksacks with these books, a few t-shirts on the top. We land in Turkmenistan, we do our train journey, we you, you, we have to hike through the desert for a bit to get to the border. But then they say, right, we need to do a luggage check. We need to check what you've got in your bags. So we've got all these rucksacks filled with Bible, or well, New Testaments and Bibles. And they've got their Kalashnikov sort of slung over their shoulder and they're going like this, feeling in our bags. They don't take anything off the top, they just feel in and they just make no comment about all these books. We don't know whether God blinded their eyes to the Bibles or they just thought, wow, Westerners read a lot. We get into Afghanistan, we get to the city and there's only one guest house in the city that's still standing and that you could stay in. And there's a journalist from Japan, from a Japanese newspaper who's staying in the place and he says, you can't get an interview, no one can get an interview. The BBC have just been in town, John Simpson's just been here. The Taliban will only see them, they're not interested in anyone else, so I'm leaving tomorrow. So we think, okay, well, maybe we're just here to pray, we'll, we'll see what happens. The next day, we do make contact with a sort of fixer who says, meet me here tomorrow and I'll take you to meet the military headquarters, to meet the leadership. We get out of the car and the education minister for the Taliban, and he says to my husband, does she have to come? We don't want her. And he says, yeah, she has to come. We fear for her safety. They let me in. We don't know why, but they let me in. But obviously I'm not allowed to speak. So I've got this bag over my shoulder with the Bibles in it. And we walk in to the military headquarters of the Taliban. The education minister, the foreign minister, and the religion minister, as he styled himself, the keeper of the Holy Quran, are the top brass that are there. We were asking them all about their Islamic beliefs and all of that. And then we get onto what we believe. And our friend Miles says, we've bought you a gift. And we think this is the most precious gift any human being could give another human being. And then Frog, my husband says, it's the Holy Bible. At which point I'm sort of, you know, primed to go into my bag. We all kind of look over to the guy with the Kalashnikov and you could cut the atmosphere with a knife, obviously. I mean, it's so tense. The education minister is um, translating, none of the others really speak English. So the keeper of the Holy Quran, the religion minister for the Taliban begins to speak, but there's a bit of a time lag, so the education minister is translating, but this is what he says. He says, I know exactly what the Bible is. I have prayed to Allah for years that I could read the Bible. I'm gonna read it every day until I finish it. Thank you for bringing me a Bible. So everyone sort of relaxes at that point. He takes hold of the Bible and then the education minister says, I want to read the Bible in English, have you got it? I want to read it so I can also improve my English at the same time. You know, I'm studying at you know, one of the world's leading universities. There's all sorts of people really skeptical about religion. There's all kinds of different ideas in comparative religion about who God is and what we should believe but at the heart of one of the most fundamentalist regimes the world has ever known was a man praying to a God, send me a Bible, I want to read the Bible. It really changed my life, that experience. It changed how I see people. Who could our God actually speak to and reach? Who's kind of outside of the realms of possibility? 
also, I think, kind of really changed my heart to see people, including people who are really hostile or people who have very different views from me with, with compassion. And, you know, always the potential that something could be going on that I don't know or understand.